you check out the gem file of a Rails 3.2 application, you may notice a gem mentioned in the comments that wasn't mentioned there before, and that is JBuilder. Now JBuilder is a template engine for rendering out a JSON response. Now JBuilder was recently created by David Hanemeyer Hansen, and instead of adding this directly to Rails 3.2, he decided to make it a separate gem. What's nice about this is you can use this in earlier versions of Rails as well. Now this provides a nice DSL for generating JSON similar to XML Builder. So how do we use it? Let me show you in this episode. Now let's say I have a blogging application with many articles, and what I would like to do is add a JSON representation for a specific article that you can access by calling .json on the URL. But if I try this now, you can see this doesn't yet work because I haven't added this feature. Now I can add this find without using JBuilder by just going into my controller action, in this case the show action, and then adding a respond to block. And I can also use the respond with call as well if I wanted to, but this way I can respond to the JSON format in addition to the HTML one. And for JSON, I want to render the uh, JSON for that given article. And now we could try this out by reloading this page, and it works. We now get the JSON response for the article, and you can see by default it's just including all of the article's attributes in the JSON. But what if I want to further customize exactly what is inside of the JSON? Well, this is where things start to get ugly. We can call as JSON on the article and customize how it's returned, such as a Let's say we only want certain attributes such as the name and the content, and maybe we want to include data from associated records as well because the article belongs to an author and it also has many comments. But let's say we want to further customize how we want our comments to behave. Maybe we only want the uh, ID and the name and the content of the comments and so on. So let's try this out by reloading this page. Hey, it worked! We have the uh, customized JSON response, including the associated records. But as far as our code goes, it's not very pretty. Now we could override as JSON in our model, but that's usually not very pretty either. So this is where JBuilder comes in. So I'll just go to my gem file here and uncomment the JBuilder gem, and then you'll need to run the bundle command to install the gem. And then back in the controller, we can completely remove the respond to call and fall back to the default behavior, which is to look for a template for that specific format. So we're going to have to create a JSON template here under the articles view directory. Let's create a new file here called uh, show.json.jbuilder. So in here we can use Ruby code to define the JSON output similar to an XML builder. So we have access to this JSON object here, which we can define attributes on such as the ID and set it to the article's ID. And we can do the same thing for the name here, set it to the article's name. Now you'll need to restart your application after installing the gem, but once you do and hit reload here, you can see that the JSON response output now just has ID and name and set to those article values. But it can be a pain to list out each of the attributes separately like this, so there's another way to do this which is more concise, and that is by calling extract on the JSON object with a bang at the end, passing in the object, and then passing in symbols for whatever methods or attributes you want to call on that. And this way it's very easy to just add another attribute to it like this. You can see if I hit reload that this does the same thing, listing out each of those attributes like it did before. Now there's an alternative syntax for this as well that you may notice in the readme, and you can just pass in parentheses directly after the period, and in Ruby 1.9 only, this will end up working because what this does in the background is calls call on the object, and this will end up going to the extract method like I showed you before, so it's just an alternative way to do it in Ruby 1.9. Now one nice thing about rendering JSON in a view template like this is that you have access to all the helper methods. I find this especially useful for rendering URLs. So let's say we want uh, the edit article URL here, and let's say we only want to display that if the current user is an admin. So we'll have access to the current user method as well if it's a helper method, if we have some kind of authentication set up. So in this case, the current user is an admin, so I do see that edit URL attribute there, but it is conditional, so it will change behavior depending on the user. Now what about nesting? Remember I mentioned that article belongs to an author, so if I want to include the author's attributes, one way to do it is just by calling author, and then passing in the article's author into here, and then passing attributes such as ID and name, and whatever else I want into here. And then when I hit reload, you can see it nests the author attributes under 
there just like we want. Now what if we need to do something more complex with this author rather than simply listing out the attributes? Maybe we have a URL that we need to assign to that author, for example. Well, what we can do is pass in a block to this author call, and this accepts a JSON object. And we can use that JSON object just like we do outside of the block, but this case is nested under that author. And so we can use that call method to extract out the attributes like that, and we can also use a URL call to add the author URL for that article, just like that. And now hit reload here, and the author now includes a URL attribute that's properly assigned. You can do the same thing for a has many association as well. For example, article has many comments here, and you could just pass in the comments directly right in like this, and then list out the attributes you want displayed on each one. So now when I reload the page, it includes the comments here with an array of each of the comments with all the attributes I specified. Now if you do need to use the block syntax with this approach, it's a little bit different because comments is an array, so it needs to iterate through the array for each element. So what you could do is pass in the JSON and the comment object directly into the block like this, and that way you have access to the comment object and you could do whatever you want with it inside of here, such as again, list out the ID name and the content. So this will do basically the same thing that we did before. Now what if you find yourself filling up this comment block here with a lot of detail, and then you need to duplicate this comment JSON someplace else throughout your application? Well, in that case, you may want to use a partial, and they work very similar to uh, view template partials. You just call partial on the JSON object like this and either pass in a path to a partial or just toss in your comment object like this. And then you can, uh, that will look for a partial under the comments directory called underscore comment dot json dot builder. So in here we have access to the JSON object just like elsewhere and we could just do the same thing that we would do inside of the comment block. Uh, we have access to the comment object here because we pass that in as an object to the partial inside of this partial call here. And if I hit reload here, you can see it works. It just displays the comments just like before, but this time it's through a partial. Well, that about wraps it up for JBuilder. It's a simple gem, but it's really useful if you need to render out complex JSON. Now, I should mention that JBuilder isn't the only gem that does this kind of thing. If you look at the bottom of the readme, there are some excellent alternatives you should also consider if you need to render complex JSON. Uh, Rabble is by far the most popular, and I may cover that in a future episode as well. But that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. The pro episode this week is on HTTP caching. There I will go over the various headers used to control caching in the user's browser and elsewhere like in a proxy such as Rack Cache. To watch that episode and all other pro and revised episodes, just head on over to railscast.com pro and then sign up there for just $9 per month.